repeating what uh, uh, was just said about the university administration wisdom in uh, 20 years ago when they actually, uh, not because they hired me, but because, <laughs> because they decided to start the CMS activity at this university, which uh, they had vision for 20 years, uh, which is justified now. And uh, unfortunately, it's not always the case with uh, uh, all the administrators and the, the you know, higher ups, but in this case, it's perfect. So I really want to thank them. Without their efforts, it would be not possible. Now, I want also to give credit to the group. Uh, we have about 40 people in the group now. And uh, uh, it's a combination of nine faculty, uh, several postdocs, several researchers, uh, graduate students, and engineers. So uh, who most of them worked for more than 10 years, almost 20 years on this experiment. Uh, and I see many of them in this audience. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, mention everybody. It's 40 people, but I will show a picture. Maybe not even everybody is on this picture. I don't know, <laughs> but it's the best I could find uh, and, uh, of the group. So uh, again, what I am saying, and this achievement would not be possible with any, with, you know, if, if any one of them is not there. So anyone contributed something to this discovery. And the university group uh, as a whole was a really a major player in this effort. Uh, we are among the largest, maybe the largest, I'm just I'm afraid to say the largest, university group in the US uh, participating in this effort from the very beginning. Uh, we were responsible for major parts of the CMS detector, which is huge, which is a huge international effort of 3,000 people. But we were responsible, leaders, official leaders, of a major part. One is called Muon Detector, and uh, you will see that the Higgs discovery was done through these particles. Now, uh, not only we built and operated this detector, but also we were leading in CMS the Higgs research, specifically in the so-called golden channel. It's called golden for a reason. It was called golden not by us, which is the most sensitive channel for the Higgs discovery and measuring Higgs properties. So this actually animation shows you, well, in some coded way, but I hope you forgive, but these physicists will understand. It shows, this is the Higgs peak, in the red, which is drawing, well, this is animation. So this is how statistics was accumulated in historical order over two years. So when we have the first evidence, and in the end we are sure that the peak is there. Uh, so the prediction is in red for the Higgs. And the prediction was done by two theorists, no, actually three, but one of them died and didn't get the Nobel Prize. Uh, so two of them are, should be here. <laughs> uh, so their names are Peter Higgs and uh, Francois Anglaire. And of course, they got the Nobel Prize today. But uh, they waited, the Nobel Committee waited for the confirmation, experimental confirmation, which is here. So by the way, uh, this plot, actual plot, was uh, first done by our graduate student, Mark Snowball. Uh, three of our graduate students will defend their thesis next year on the Higgs discovery and facts. I think it's the largest, at least in this golden channel, in any group in CMS, not just US, any group, from all international corporations. So, and of course, faculty advised them wisely, so everybody <laughs> deserves credit. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, by the way, uh, some features from this plot, since Mark plotted it, came from us. Uh, this is actually a background peak of known particle, which was first predicted and calculated by us. And then CMS, and we found it, and then CMS put it on size <coughs> comparison sort of calibration. Uh, well, down to small details, of course, uh, there are many others. Mass of this particle was first measured by our students from Guan Chen, uh, who will defend his thesis on that. Uh, but down to small details, the colors were selected by Mark. So they stay the same. <laughs> I think it's nice colors, <laughs> good taste. <laughs> Blue and orange. So, okay. Uh, Anglaire, Francois Anglaire and Peter Higgs. Francois Anglaire is 80 years old. Uh, Peter Higgs is 84 years old. You have to live long these days <laughs> to get the Nobel Prize. 
And unfortunately, Andreas, uh, collaborator on the paper, main paper, Brown, he died. And this is the only reason why he's not here. Uh, it's actually room for three people. Now, the uh, University of Florida is present on this picture as well. <laughs> Try to find it. I mean, some people know, but majority don't. Uh, so, well, by the way, uh, this is a prominent theorist from CERN, Tron Ellis. This is a, a time of discovery seminar at CERN last year. Uh, only selected people were led to the audience. <laughs> Everybody was. Uh, uh, so, this is uh, Fabiola Giannotti. By the way, this is the first time when Andrea and Higgs met. They shook hands. Uh, uh, so Fabiola Giannotti is the spokesman of competitor experiment which co-discovered Higgs Atlas. And there is one University of Florida person, this one. Pierre Ramon had good idea, excellent idea <coughs> to put on the same shirt, which he still has, but you know, I, I sent him too late. <laughs> but I can recognize him, <laughs> and he can confirm. Uh, so, uh, next slide, please. So, of course, uh, for those who don't know, it's a huge experiment. This is a uh, uh, place, uh, aerial photo of the place, uh, the border between France and uh, Switzerland is somewhere. And this is a ring which under the ground uh, where the particles are you know, collided. And uh, it's six miles in diameter. It goes, oh, this is the border. So I think this part is Switzerland. This is, clearly this is Geneva Airport. This is, gives you the size. So next slide. This is schematically our CMS experiment. The reason I show it because these two pieces of experiment, you can see it's a large pieces, where University of Florida is possible. So I want to tie it to, the, to make it visual. Next one. Uh, this is the Flo University of Florida team, or subsection of it, large subsection of it. Next one. Uh, this is again, this schematically the piece which we built. It's showing one detector. And this one is this one, for example, it's, or any other of those, which have been tested downstairs in this building. Uh, actually, uh, this guy is Alex Madorski, who is here, our engineer. Next slide. They were testing these cosmic rays. God sends us through cosmic rays convenient particles to test the detector. So this is uh, Jay Norton, who is also here, right? Our technician, you know, at that time. Uh, uh, this one chamber, which is ready, tested, ready to ship to serve. They have many of them prepared and shipped. Next one. This is uh, well, maybe the same, maybe the other chamber from Florida, uh, put on the disk, first one, in CMS. Next one, this is already in Geneva. Next one. Well, these are two out of eight disks built and pictured uh, on the covers of the major journals, Science and Newsweek. By the way, it says the, the uh, signature here shows accuracy of journalism. It's a joke, in my opinion. Here it says, the biggest experiment ever, and it's European. It's a joke because none of this is built in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's just located in Europe. Well, it could be located in space. Some experiments are located in space. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> so, uh, well, again, one more type of the discovery to the University of Florida. This is one of the Nobel Prize winners, Francois Angler, in Miami. There we have run, Pierre Ramon and I, and a few others run the, every year conference in Miami. Uh, uh, so, together with him is our own Pierre Ramon. <laughs> uh, and, uh, by the way, this is the, we have a hand in right places. This is the chair of the Nobel Prize Committee in Physics. <laughs> Lars Brink, uh, uh, who probably will be in the ceremony of awards. Next one. So now we come back to this one. These two Nobel Prize laureates and Florida in between. <laughs> so I think that's all I wanted to say.